Randy Backman talks about one of the most difficult times in his life leaving the Guess Who when they were at the height of their career. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. You know, after all these years and the, and the hardships you've had, and I know what happened when you left the Guess Who, that was a difficult time. I mean, blackballed, leaving this big band, uh, no one would hire you. How yeah. did you handle, how does a man handle that? Do you just get up and, and your legs are more firm on the ground? Say, I'm going to, I will show them. What do you do? Um, you just never give up. If there's a mountain, you've got to climb it or go around it. Who taught you that? Is that just in that your is that your software or that you just have that? Well, when you have a dream, uh, which I had, Burton had, Neil Young had, we're still going. Fred Turner, the four horsemen, as they call us out of Winnipeg, are still riding around the world playing guitar, rocking and rolling. I'm playing with Burton in July. We're doing a big tour. Um, I'm going with my own band in April, doing my sit down every song tells a story tour. Um it's what you do when you start doing it at four or five and practice every, I still get up and practice two hours a day on a guitar. I just did an album with my son tell called Bachman Bachman. That's going to be coming out soon. I was told not to do anything that sounded like the guess who or BTO or tell Bachman solo, create something new. He and I wrote brand new songs. They're quite Americana. I'm playing banjo. My, my violin, which I expanded to be a viola because it's bigger. I had frets put on it like David Hidalgo in uh, Los Lobos because I need the frets because you're sliding around like a, a sick little kitten. I had frets put on it. And we did a really incredible Americana album that sounded like the Wilburys, Early Eagles, Tom Petty. It really is a great sing-alongable album. We just finished it now. Was there a defining moment that when you said, I got to leave, I got to go? When we played, uh, this was Bruce Allen's house, I played, uh, he had a tape recorder, played back freeways on his album, on his system. And Fred Turner, was who's the spokesman for them, because I was not the spokesman anymore, said, um, with all due respect, what I hear on this album is another direction. And I said, yeah, I'm trying to, it's 1976, 77. Everything's disco. Everything's got horns and strings. I'm trying to change with the trend. The doobies have done this. So-and-so has done that. Uh, I'm really trying here. And we have clearly different directions. Maybe we should go our own separate ways. And I said, okay. Jeez. Done. Did you hear, did you listen to Street Action in the uh, Rock and Roll Nights? Yeah. What was your first reaction with Street Action, for instance? It begins with M-E-D. And it has an eye in the middle and ends with Kerr. <laughs> it's mediocre. Even though they got a good bass player in Jim Valance, it missed something. Jim, Jim Clench. Jim Clench. Yeah. Well, Jim Valance produced it. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Right from Brian Adams. I mean, he's a buddy of Fred Turner. So they had Jim and Jim. Somehow it didn't match the weirdness I had. Because my edict with BTO, and I was copying these people, was to not sound like the Who, not sound like Credence, not sound like anyone. And somehow out of two guitars, bass and drums, I got my own sound that stands out today on radio. When I got asked by Sam Feldman to produce Trooper and did all those hits, we're here for a good time, raise a little hell. My edict was not to let them sound like BTO and they don't. No, they don't. I'm, I'm a, I helped Smith and McGuire write their song. They wrote great songs. I still show up today with them and play we're here for a good time and raise a little hell. They're still buddies of mine. They're but retiring. They are, they are Canada's top rock and roll party band. Yeah. And they're still touring. Yeah. But they're retiring. They're, they're going to stop touring. Smitty and, and Ray had said that the Trooper will go on without them. Obviously, they'll license it out or whatever. They, oh, they, really? Yeah. That's what Mick Jones did with Foreigner. Yeah. Now, keep in mind the entire interview, and the link is in the bottom in the description of this video. If you want to see the whole thing, it's on our sister channel, Rock History Book. It's also going to be a podcast, and the links are in the description as well. Make sure you comment on our videos. You know we read all the comments. Subscribe to our channel. It's so important to us. And of course, spread the word. Let people know. And share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.